We've previously had a look at the 98 and 99 Stanley Rabbit, Philister, planes, whatever you want to call them. Um, planes that are designed specifically for widening a groove. So if you've made a dado, uh, you've got the slot there for your timber to sit into and it's not quite wide enough, this is what you can use to widen that groove. We've got a left and a right handed one. Uh, they were sold separately as discussed in the previous video. These are quite expensive. Um, you can get good condition ones if you keep an eye out for around about the $150 mark as a pair, um, depending on their condition and what comes with them and whether they've got the V groove in the back for the fence or not. They can range up to $500 for a pair and that's Australian dollars. Um, so convert that to whatever you want. What if you want that functionality, but you don't have that budget? Well, Stanley has thought of that. That's where they released the Stanley number 79. The Stanley 79 is both of those planes in one. It's the left and the right. Both blades are sitting there in the one plane. Now, for all intensive purposes, if you were to split down the middle, this is the same as the uh, Stanley 99, and this is the same as the Stanley 98. The difference is instead of a thumb screw, it's got this knurled uh, knob to adjust your blade. Um, the feet, however, or, or the nose I should say, can be swapped around so you've got your standard nose or you've got your bull nose quite easily swapped around just by undoing the screw quite simply removed we take the foot out spin it round drop it back in so you've got the screw hole lines back up. Screws are always a little bit difficult to get back in just to match the thread because they're recessed and there's not a lot of depth there. It's a little bit difficult to get your fingers on and get it started but once you get it started in with the screwdriver and away you go. Um, and that'll line the nose up perfectly every time because of the way the screws seat. So you have got both there in the one plane. These you can pick up for around about $150. Um, and one of the key functions of these, you may have noticed extra screw hole sitting here. So you've got the screw hole poking through right there for the nose to hold the nose in place. You've got the screw hole there, which is if you look to the other side, poking through to hold your blade in place. There is a third screw hole here. So the third screw hole is repeated on both sides. There's no V grooves, but this is for a fence. Now it's just a pressed metal fence. In some cases, people have made timber fences for them. But once again, fence goes in and it's a couple of knurled nuts, the same, oh, knurled bolts I should say. The same as what's on the front for holding the blade in place and there is two of them one either side now that does enable you to get the angle slightly different on your fence but whether that's of any value or not is questionable the upshot is you're going to be dropping this in lining it up checking your measurements either side, making sure that it's right, and then tightening them up in place. Now you can tighten one and then adjust the other to make the angle and then tighten it um, to make sure that you get it right, then tighten them both, make sure they're good and solid. That'll hold in place. Now, the fence enables you, of course, to then go straight into play 
and to start cutting right where you want without any difficulty and you know that you're going to create a rebate there exactly where you want it. Now with the later 98 and 99s they did have a fence option but they weren't um, easily found with that option. A lot of them that are available in the market don't have that option. Now I don't have a clamp and I don't have this connected to the surface so it's just me holding it. It uh, makes it a little bit difficult but that gives you an idea of where you can go with this. Now of course once again these are ideal to be used on an angle to cut in and create a uh, dovetail rabbit but in order to do that you'll probably want to poke the blade out a little bit more than what I've got it and remove the fence because the fence is square. Uh, it would be possible to create an angled fence so that you get your dovetail slot on either side um, exactly the same on either side to the right angle because it is pressed steel so to match this and create a fence and then put the angle on it exactly as you want it would be easily done and then you have a very solid dovetail plane one thing to consider though with these is the fact that you've got both blades sitting there some people find it a bit of a concern that if you've got a long slot that you're working on as you're cutting into this one and you're taking it out this one is riding on a higher piece of timber if you're going the other way this one's cutting out that one's riding on a higher piece of timber um, and you're not actually effectively touching this properly except for right behind where you're doing the cut because you're riding on that bit of blade so to have it ride perfectly along here you do need to back off the blade you're not using I don't see it as a problem because I don't find that there is that much of a concern between the difference on what I'm cutting and uh, what is being catched here the distance between these two and the amount that is sticking out is such a minute angle that we're talking about it's not going to have any perceptive impact on that cut that you're making um, unless you are making extremely high precision cuts um, and I am talking highly highly to the thousandth of a millimeter uh, cuts then that's not going to be a problem and let's be honest we're not talking about working with steel where there's no flex in the final product and things have to be perfect we're talking about timber timber has flex timber has movement it swells it shrinks so that small angle and difference between here and here based on the depth that the blade is sticking out is so minute that in my book you set your blades up you forget about them and then you've got in one hand one plane handy left and right so you can easily swap with the single plane in your hand all set up going from one side of your dado to the other um, 79 very handy plane one plane at about the half the price of the older two alternatives 79 versus a 98 and 99 all the functionality for a half of the price no matter whether you're using or collecting happy hunting